Every prim in Second Life consists of a certain amount of faces, going from one up to a maximum of eight faces. And we can manipulate the look of these faces by all the options we have here at the texture tab. Every face can have its own color, texture and, and settings. Um, if I would do an action now, it would go for the whole prim, but I can select separate faces by this option here, where it says select face. If I mark this one, you see these crosshairs appearing for the faces selected. By holding shift, I can subtract faces from my selection or I can add them and I can even add them at other prims like that. And all the selected faces will be manipulated at once. Um, first thing we can do is apply a color to a prim. Um, here it says color, if you click the box uh, there, the color picker opens, you just select a basic color and then you can click around in this color picker to find something you like. Um, and if you want, you can save it by dropping it in one of the boxes here, it will be available later on. Um, say I want uh, to have this color at uh, other faces and other prims, I can simply select these faces, then select the one with the color last click the color box here and say OK and the textures will be, the color will be um, immediately at the other prims. Second option we have is apply a texture to a, to a prim and they can have both, a, a prim the faces can have and the texture and a color. Um, I have here in my inventory, I have this uh, texture, it's a stone uh, texture. Um, if I can take it, if I drop it in here, the texture box, it will appear on the on the whole prim, um, but I can also again select like I select two faces over here. If I drop it now in the texture box, it will appear on those two faces. I can also drop it um, directly in world on the faces where I want my texture to appear. Now, um, if I have a texture selected and I click here, the texture box, the texture picker opens and I can see where the texture is in my inventory. And I can also change uh, the texture from here. I can set the default, I can set blank and I can set transparent in here as well. Same as with the color, if I want my texture to appear at another prim, I simply select the face at the other prims, select this one last, click here in the picker and say OK and it will appear at the other one as well. Um, what else can we do? We can set a certain amount of transparency here, say like 40% it will look like this and we can set glow and like this to be used with moderation and then there's full bright um, if we look at the prim you see the top is lit more than the sides there's a shading um, depending on the position of the sun um, and if we mark full bright um, basically we are disconnecting our prim from the second life lightning system and every side looks um, lit the same amount like this um, during night it looks like that. So if I want like here my logo to stand out, I can uh, select the face of the logo and select full bright and it will look like this. Along with our texture, we can also apply a normal and a specular map for bumpiness and shininess, but this is more advanced. I'm not going into that now. Uh, but here at the bottom of the texture tab, we have our mapping options. Here we can change the horizontal and vertical scale, the ratio at which the texture will appear on the faces. So say I'm going to set this at two horizontal, looks like this, two vertical, it comes like that. Here we can also flip by these arrows here, we can flip the texture. Then uh, repeats per meter, um, you should not touch this, this goes automatic. Um, rotation. Say I'm going to rotate 90 degrees, like that. And then there's the horizontal and vertical offset where we can slide the texture over the face, like that. And typically for a repeat of two, I'm going to set 0 0.5 to make it uh, nicely match. Um, the whole settings here, I can copy them and paste them onto another prim, like that. Uh, but if I just want to um, have the repeats that I've set here on another uh, prim, let me show you, take this one over here. I select uh, first this face uh, where everything is still at uh, zero and one. Um, and then I, s I shift select uh, the face uh, where I want to take the, the settings from. Now you will see these settings appearing, but they are grayed out. 
um, because there's a difference between the two. So I click in this box and I hit enter and this will uh, transfer these settings to my first selected face like this. I can simply bring everything onto the other prim like that. Um, all this is uh, the default mapping. There is uh, an option um, planner mapping, which is an automatic projection. Um, it can be useful, but on uh, mesh objects, it's uh, it's bugged, so it doesn't work all, all the time. And if you use this automatic system, you don't actually learn texturing. So I would recommend certainly uh, at the beginning working with the default settings, which gives you more control and you actually learn how to texture um, your prims. And finally, we get to the content tab because our prim can also serve as a box. We can drop stuff inside. Um, we cannot drop folders, but we can drop note cards and objects and textures, everything we want to pack. Like that, you just drag and drop it from the inventory and it will appear inside this prim. This is also the place where scripts go. I have this slow rotation script here. If I drop it inside, the prim will start slowly rotating. One final word on edit mode. If you are going to res objects prims from your inventory, well, they can appear in two ways in here. This is a solid object. It's a link set or a single prim. And here we have a coerced object. Um, this can be a bunch of prims objects taken together into the inventory. So if I res this out now, I drop it in world. It appears in here, but actually those were five prims. Two of them ended up inside my building. So now I have to get into this tedious task of selecting them all and pull them out and place them where I want them. So it is um, interesting if you're going to rest something from your inventory and certainly in case of a coalesced object to hit control three first and put yourself into edit mode. And if I rest them out now, everything would get selected upon rest and I can directly place them where I want them. Now we also have create mode. Here at the building window at the top, the center tab is edit mode and at the right here we can enter create mode. We get all these uh, available shapes and the cursor has changed into this uh, sparkling stick. Now we don't use those that much anymore because we have mesh prims now, but still the basic second life cube stays a very interesting prim to use. First of all, it's the fastest prim handy. You can enter create mode by hitting control four at the keyboard and then you just click the floor and there is your prim. There's no way to get the prim faster in world. Just control four and click and you have it. I often use it as a measurement tool as well, just to get the distance between those two prims. Say I want to place another one at equal distance. I can do this quickly by the use of this cube like that. Um, I also use it for uh, marking certain things like say I've been building a house and this is my stairs and in the evening I'm looking at my work and then I notice oh there's something went wrong here there's uh, it got out of alignment and I don't feel for fixing this now or I don't have the time so I will just res a regular cube I make it red and place it there and when I come back later to this build I can see how oh, something needs to be fixed over there. Then you should also use a regular cube as the root of your builds. There are two reasons for this. First, if you're going to use mesh products like from Zimbal Lab, the creator name of these objects will always be the name of the original uploader, uh, Dr. Zimmerman in this case. And if you're going to build a house with products from different creators, uh, you want to have your name uh, showing up as the overall uh, creator of the building. So by using a regular cube that you res out that will have your name as creator and you link everything to this one, the whole build will show you, your name as the creator's name. Second, this is the most stable route we can have. If you would use a mesh prim as root, there can be small disalignments or seams getting into your build. You will not have these problems by using uh, a regular steady second life 
uh, cube as your build. Make it uh, some, some part of your floor or something, some where down where it will collide with uh, with the world upon rest. Um, you can make it part of your floor or you can just set it uh, transparent if you want, like that. Um, just make a regular prim the root of your build. So I think this was it. Um, thank you for watching, have fun building and see you in Second Life.